In episode five of the Bike Touring Turkey series, we adventured through the beauty and the challenges of the Taurus Mountains before arriving in the city of Alanya. It's hard to beat the beauty and the grandness of mountain riding, but after a week of harsher conditions, we're excited to spend a few days spinning our wheels along the coast. We prepare our bikes and fuel our bodies with food, chai, and coffee before hitting the road west. We make our way out of the hustle and bustle of Alanya. It's a relief when the traffic begins to lighten and the roads turn from paved to gravel. It's amazing how you don't even need to go that far from the coast to get at some nice quiet trails. We started off our day in not my favorite way on some busier roads. There was one section where we had to go the, through these three tunnels and they had this little kind of sign and button to hit if you're a cyclist. But all that kind of did was make this sign start flashing and the sign said like, I think it's some version of uh, if flashing, you know, cyclist in tunnel, um, but there was no shoulder and trucks passed really close, which is a little nerve wracking. But in those moments, I try to just like breathe and relax, relax my shoulders, relax my arms, because I know that the more stressed I am, the more tense I am, the higher risk that I'm not going to control my bike well. So I focus on just trying to, you know, stay on a a uh, solid, straight, predictable path for the cars. So Michael and I kept our cool, we got through those tunnels, and now we're on some nice quiet roads away from the coast. Michael's eating some helva. You need a bite. <laughs> the best, and I'm gonna have a little juice box refuel. We are pleasantly surprised by the route we cobbled together in Kamut in order to avoid main roads. It offers the occasional technical challenge, but mostly allows us to sit back and enjoy rolling along quiet country roads all on our own. We stop at a cemetery to freshen up before finding a camping spot for the night. We have become creatures of habit. Our dinner camping is almost always rice, a couple of veggies, whatever is kind of at the market, zucchini, eggplant, pepper, um, a can or package of beans with sauce, which is so good, it's like tomatoes and salty, and sometimes it'll have little vegetables in it, and raisins. That's our masterpiece. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. We just had such a good sleep in the tent. It's so nice to be back in the tent. And waking up listening to all the little buggies and birds and creatures. But time to get up and get back on the road and see what adventure is in store for us today. I told Michael to be still while I was filming. And this is what he's been doing the whole time. Michael! Michael! <laughs> That's very good. You could be hired on a show. <laughs> ah! Oh, jeez. <laughs> Switch off, we can take turns. Oh, you got it. I have learned two things about coffee in Turkey. One, uh, it's our first time using the AeroPress on a tour, and it does not seem to do well with Turkish coffee, which is like ground really fine. It makes this like thick 
puck and the air seems to really struggle to go through, so you have to like really fight with it. Um, but you know, it's still delicious and it gives you a little arm workout. A Turkish coffee is designed to like be left in the cup, like it sits in there, which makes it so flavorful. Um, but when we got here, I was like, well, I need to have Turkish coffee. So I got a little bag of Turkish coffee, but it's ground really fine. So it makes it harder for the air press. The second thing is that I actually really like coffee black. I never did before. And coming here, because I try not to have too much dairy, I was like, I'm gonna have, I'm not gonna enjoy the coffee because I won't be able to have, you know, dairy-free milk. But Turkey has made me realize I really like black coffee or tea when it's good coffee or tea. After a week experiencing cold, wind, and hail in the mountains, it's a treat to be able to pedal along in the warmth of a sunny morning. Unfortunately, the coast offers its own set of challenges. Despite our efforts to keep away from busy roads, due to a series of bridges, we find them difficult to avoid. The rest of the day sees us singularly focused on navigating traffic and making it safely to the city of Antalya. Although it makes for a challenging ride, we find ourselves handsomely rewarded when we treat ourselves to some guzleme in Antalya the following morning. Guzleme is a thin, unleavened dough brushed with butter or oil and filled with ingredients like spinach, cheese, meat, and spices. Our hungry cycling bodies can't get enough. The next day, under the helpful guidance of a warm showers host, we prepare to continue west to take in some of the many historical sites along the coast before looping back into the mountains once more. Cats seem to be as common here in Antalya as like squirrels are in Ontario, which I am here for because I love cats. And one is bidding us a very desperate farewell at the moment. Bye, buddy. It's a sunny start as we cruise along the seaside bike lane out of Antalya. As we have now come to expect along the coast, some busy roads are required. But we eventually connect to a part of the Lycian Way, a 500 kilometer hiking trail in western Turkey. Although we find some passes too challenging for our loaded touring bikes, it makes for an excellent way to get off road and find a quiet camping spot. Or so we think. We thought we found the perfect little secluded wild camping spot, but then we discovered we have company. The shepherd wishes us well, the goats disperse, and we settle in for the night. The next morning, we dry off the tent and load up our bikes for the day's ride. We're all packed up, and I don't know if anyone else is like this, but my panniers always end up like this disaster with so much stuff strapped to them. I have clothes that I want to air out. I have a rag that needs to dry. I have a garbage bag to make sure that we don't leave any garbage behind when we're camping. And I always just end up with just this big mound on my bike. So it's not like the most glamorous, but it works. A few more busy roads are required, and one slightly rickety bridge.
But eventually, we arrive at the site of the ancient city of Olympus. We take a break by the water before exploring the Olympus ruins. and continuing on to find a spot to rest for the night. Good morning. We are just packing up our cozy little wild camp spot and today we're heading back into the mountains. We've had such a great time along the coast. It's been warm and beautiful and we got to dip our toes in the Mediterranean, but nothing is quite as grand and magnificent as the mountains. So we can't wait to get there. Off we go. We make our way along quiet coastal roads before turning inland toward the city of Kumluka. Here we will rest before the final leg of our journey through the mountains. That's coming up in the next video. <laughs>